1920 George Hellas found at the NFL, and as coach of the Chicago Bears, he gave the game its first great superstar, and Red Grange ran wild. In 1933, George Preston Marshall won his fight for an NFL championship game, matching the winners of the Western Conference and the top team in the East. Fittingly, Hallis's Bears were the Western champs, their foes the New York Giants, and on a cold day in Wrigley Field, they defeated the Giants 23 to 21. The same two teams met in the 1934 game. Unable to find footing or success on the slippery field, the Giants trailed 13-3 late in the game. But the team's trainer spent the third quarter in search of tennis shoes. He found them, and with solid footing beneath them, the Giants scored 27 points in the final quarter to win 30-13. In 1937, a rookie named Barr quarterbacked the Washington Redskins to an NFL title as the Bears fell beneath slinging Sammy's arm, 28 to 21. But the decade still belonged to the Bears and the Giants who had struggled for seven years, both teams stalking a dynasty. By 1940, neither team had a clear edge, but the Bears had the stubborn mind of George Hallis on their side. With Sid Luckman as quarterback, Hallis drew diagrams and his bears followed them to perfection as they routed the Redskins 73 to nothing in the 1940 title game. It still stands as the most one-sided game in championship history. Chicago and the T were to go on to dominate most of the decade. But in 1948 and 1949, the Philadelphia Eagles shook up the balance by winning back-to-back -back championships for the first time in NFL history. With Steve Van Buren leading the charge, Philadelphia seemed well prepared for the 50s. But the Cleveland Browns and their great quarterback, Otto Graham, came onto the scene in 1950. A superb passer and respected leader, Graham led his team to a divisional championship in each of his 10 years as quarterback. By 1946, his team had played in six NFL championship games and won three of them. Graham and the Browns were a sensation in the 50s. They might never have lost had it not been for the Detroit Lions and Bobby Lane. Lane had a way with men. He was a commanding leader, gaining both the respect and fear of all those who played for him. He passed a curious jinx over the Browns as the Lions beat Cleveland in the 52, 53, and 57 title games. The most famous game of the decade matched Johnny Unitas and the Colts against feared quarterback killer Sam Huff and the Giants. This 1958 championship has been called the greatest game ever played. With a score tied at the end of regulation play, a sudden death over time was begun, the first in championship history. Alan Amici went in for the touchdown, and the Baltimore fans went wild. America had a new sports idol, and the game of football was ready to blast into the television age of the 60s. It was time for Vince Lombardi to charm the football world and beat everybody in sight. The Packers completely dominated the decade, playing in six NFL championship games and winning five of them. Lombardi was the king, and his kingdom was never on better display than in 1967 when the pack played Dallas. Incredible call, incredible fans. And a block by Jerry Kramer. The pack wins for the third year in a row. Lombardi becomes a legend. Today, the Browns and the Vikings battle for power. The winner may start a new dynasty but the Packer legend will be hard to overcome. 